Buccini Love. I was going through a lot of things in my life. I had the. Oh, well, y'all want to hear me, huh? Move me that. Anyway, in 2000, I was going through a stream of different things. I had the lowest self esteem ever. I didn't love myself enough. It seemed like I was buying my friends. I would do so many things for the guys I dated and. And I mean, it was nothing I wouldn't do for anyone. So I would tell my friend about it. Like, you know, every time I date these guys, it seems like they just don't want to do nothing for me. They don't want to give, they don't want to share. I'm tired of this. So she says, well, you know what? I'm going to introduce you, introduce you to someone. It's my husband's brother. He's cute, you'll like him. I said, all right, so I'm going to go over here and get myself cute and meet this man. Maybe this might be the thing I've been waiting on. I go over there, so cute. He was tall, brown-skinned, had some nice little wavy hair. He was mowing the lawn, so you know how good that looks. You know, sweat running. You know, I'm like, oh, he's mowing the grass. He likes to get it in. OK, cool. So you know, he had the little gleaming teeth and I'm like, hey, how are you? I'm like, I'm fine. I introduced myself. He introduced himself. He said that he owns some properties. I'm like, yes, <laughs> the jackpot. I'm like, yes. So then a few minutes of talking, my girlfriend came over and said, hey, you know, you're ready to go shopping. You know, you ready to go? And I'm like, well, yeah, I'll, I'll go. Let's go. He said, y'all get ready to go shopping? I'm like, yeah. He says, well, here, here goes some money. So he pulls out the big knot in his, out of his pocket. And was like, here you go. Gave me a couple of hundred dollars. So I was real, my heart was beating. I didn't, I didn't know how to receive anything. I, I, I wasn't used to it, but I sure took those few little hundred dollar bills. Sure did. We went shopping, we ate, and we got back to the house. And he said, well, let's go. We can ready to do some more running around. I'm like, all right, cool. So we pick up his kids. We went and I met his kid's mother. So I even went over to his mother's house. She was pretty. She says, hey, how are you? I'm like, hi. He said, look, my, look who I have. She's pretty, isn't she? His mother was like, yeah, she's beautiful. Oh, my God. My son is going to spoil you. I can see him buying you all kinds of stuff, fur coats and diamonds. And I mean, he's going to take care of you. And I'm like, OK, cool. <laughs> you know? She cooked some catfish, my favorite. So we eating, and I'm feeling good, like the mama loving me. So I felt good. So. You know, the next day went by, you know, I'm like, you know, we've been riding around in this little two-seater car. We need to, you know, amp it up a little bit. So he said, okay, well, we can go to the dealership, you know, and, and look around. So earlier that day, he says, well, here, I got a check for you. It's $2,500. I need you to put it in the bank. So that way, you know, you can have this money because, you, you know, you're a sweet person. And I'm like, well, thank you. So, you know, he said, well, I own some properties. And the lady wanted to give me this down deposit but you can put it in the bank. So I went and put it in the bank, and you know, they give you a little blank checkbook. I'm happy, like I got $2,500. <laughs> yes. So the next, so I think later on that day, we went riding, we went to a few dealerships and you know, tried off a few cars. They were very nice cars. So finally, we made it to one last place. And I'm like, you know what, this is it. And he said, okay, well, let's go in here and see what kind of car you want. So we go in. He's like walking around the place, like, oh, yeah, you know, get my baby whatever car she wants. You know, if you can get it for her, I'll give you a few hundred dollars by Friday. So I'm walking around like, hmm, thinking I'm all that. People were looking like, who is this lady? You know, because I had never been spoiled like that before, so I felt like a little queen walking in there. You know, I'm looking around at the cars, you know, dragging my little fingertip on the car, you know. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be my car right here. So he said, well, let's go over here and look at some rims, you know, and I love rims. I'm a car fanatic, so I couldn't wait to get over to the rim shop because, you know, they put the rims on the car and have it ready for you all at the same time. So he, he goes over there and again, get my baby whatever she wants. Baby, what kind of rims you want? And, I'm, you know, I put on my little sexy voice like, well, baby, you know, I really like those rims right there. You know, you know that sack chasing voice. 
garçom. Y'all know about that voice. I want that one right there, yeah. People were staring, so I really rubbed it in. I was tooting my little nose up in the air like, yeah, I'm all that and a bag of chips. That's right. I'm getting those rims for that car over there, yes. So we went, put the order in. I wrote my little check, the little blank checkbooks I had for like $5,000 to put down on the car. Of course, it's my car. So the next day or two went by. He, you know, pulls up in the car with the rims on it. And I'm like, hey, you got my car. How did you get this car? Oh, I gave them the deposit. Everything went good. And I'm like, all right. So he said, well, let's go. I said, well, let me take a little ride in it. You know, so he said, okay. So me and my son hopped in the car. We riding all around Detroit. I think we even went to River Rouge, if anyone knows about that place. So we rode through River Rouge Park. I'm feeling good, rims shining. It was a beautiful summer day. And so I went back home maybe 45 minutes later. And I says, um, he said, well, you know, let me grab the keys and go for a ride too, you know, cause I, you know, I'm like, well, you know, go ahead because you did bring me the car. I was happy. So I let him drive the car. One hour went by. Two hours went by. I'm thinking, okay, he'll be back in a minute, you know, because the kids is at my house. His, he, you know, his children were there. Three hours went by. Four hours went by. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours went by. So now the kids start to talking because they were ready to go home too. <laughs> so they were like, you know what? My daddy been doing this. He do this all the time. I'm like, what? Yeah, my daddy do this all the time. I'm like, what do you do? Do what? Well, you know. He'll tell females, you know, hey, we're going to go to Cedar Point. Why don't you rent a car? They would rent these cars, and then he would take the cars for three or four weeks and wouldn't return them until they come up with some money to get their own rental back. He don't, it don't matter what it would be. He could take a dog, a computer, whatever you wanted that was dear to you. You're going to come up with this bread to get your car or whatever it is back. So I'm sitting here like, oh, my God, I got played. I ain't never been played before. You know, I was one of those, you can't play me and I'm the player. How you gonna gang me and I'm the gangster? You know, I had all those cliches. So, I called his mother, crying. Your son got my car. Oh, sweetie, don't worry about it. He's just joyriding. He'll bring you your car back. Don't call the police. I'm like, but I need my car. That car in my name. She said, well, just, just be calm down and relax. And I'm like, okay. I didn't tell nobody. I was so embarrassed because I knew I got played. So later on, he calls and say, hey, you call my mama crying? I said, yeah, you got my car. I want my car back. He said, well, you ain't getting nothing back. You remember that check I gave you, that $2,500? I was like, yeah. Well, you go in there and get my money, and I'll give you your car back. And if you don't do it, me and some guys, we coming through there. I'm like, oh, hell no. I said, it's like that? He was like, yeah, it's like that. So I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? The man got my car, the money in the bank. The next day, I'm at the bank. You hear me? America. <laughs> so I go in there. I tell the, the bank teller, look, this is what's going on. I got a car. I told her the whole story. I waited about five or ten minutes, you know, waiting for my check. I'm looking really pretty. Thinking, I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to get my money, and I'm going to get his man his money, and I'm going to get my car back. About five minutes later, the police, two of them, when I turned around, like basic instinct. Remember how she turned around in that chair? I felt like that. I turned around, they were like, uh, who gave you this check? I said his name was Amir. Amir what? Amir Moss. He said, well, we don't know, we don't even never heard of that name before. Why did he give you this big check? I said, because I deserved it. You know, I'm a good mother, you know, to my kids. You know, I, what's wrong with me getting $2,500? You know, it was like, well, this ain't right. This check may be fraudulent, so we're going to have to take you in. I'm like, what? Yeah, we're going to have to take you in for questioning. So they look, took my little stuff right on down there with handcuffs. I'm sugar sharp, too. I got on a black mini dress, a hair weave down to my butt, some sandals. It was a beautiful summer day. I mean, they took me down a 1300 bulb, and I felt like they caught a prostitute off the street. <laughs> So I'm in there fighting roaches and crying and like wondering how did I get myself in this situation. And I ended up seeing a police officer walk by and I said, officer, please. I said, could you pray for me? 
she looked at me, she said, you better pray for yourself. So I felt bold as hell when she said that. But I prayed for myself, because I had never prayed for myself. My parents always prayed for me. My father a pastor, so I'm used to them praying for me all day. I never prayed for myself, but I prayed that night. So the next day, they took me. They said, well, we're going to take you over to the uh, 17th district because the car that you got is re re uh, reported wanted. And I'm like, what? So I forgot I had OnStar. And I had the little info for OnStar for the car, and I had a little code. And they said, well, before we take you down there, we're going to look around for this car. I said, okay, cool. I wanted to help them find this car because I didn't want to be accused of stealing the car because I had never seen it no more after that day. So I remember them taking me down the street and I, uh, down my mother's and father's street. They were keeping my kids, and I just remember ducking down in the back seat of the car because I seen my kids playing. I remember that to this day. I did not want them to see it. So we went on over to 17th District. From there, we went to Clare County, Michigan. They took me to a prison. So I had to cough, bend over, take my weave out of my hair, and not with no glue remover either. I'm talking about straight up shampoo, the, the worst shampoo ever. And I snatch and weave out my hair, had to take my nails off. That's what they do before you go into to the community with the other inmates. So I said, you know what? I always wanted to know what it was like to be in jail, not that I wanted to go. So I psyched myself up like I was a reporter or something, an uh, <laughs> undercover investigator. You know, I had my little coveralls on, like, hey, y'all, what's up? And we played solitaire. They showed me how to play that. They braided my hair. We started singing. I even drew all of them. And I mean, we had a good time. One lady touched my heart the most. She was, she was bald headed. And I, and I said, what's wrong with you? She said, well, I have cancer. I said, for real? She said, yeah. And I said, well, you, don't you get the chemotherapy? She said, no, because my insurance will not cover that while I'm in jail. And I was like, oh my God. So I think that your insurance ain't nothing when you go to jail. So I knew I didn't want to go back in there because I needed my insurance. <laughs> so they had to drop me off that night. It was about 12 o'clock at night. They, they drop you off at a designated area. And mine was school, school craft and middle belt. And I just remember getting out of that van with a garbage bag with my belongings, hair matted. I looked like a crackhead Jill Scott. <laughs> my mother picked me up, my nephew. I was just mad that she brought him with me. I was so mad, like, why you bring him with you, mom? I just remember saying, I didn't want nobody to see me looking like that. So I got home and just looked at my place. I was like, this is filthy. I got to do something about it. But then I just said, you know what? I'm going to paint this picture of what ha how I looked when I was in jail. So I painted a picture of me sitting in jail. Then I went to work. And I said, hey, y'all, I can paint. And they said, you can paint? I said, yeah. So I showed them a few little pictures and stuff. So this one guy said, you can paint? How? I said, yep, I can paint. And I ain't never went to school for none of this stuff. So he brought me a picture. And I said, oh my God, he's testing me now. I didn't really think he was gonna bring me no picture to paint. It was an infant. <laughs> I ain't never do no baby or anything, painted or nothing. So I painted that picture. And that was my first painting. And it's sitting in a million dollar home right now. That motivated me. And, and it just made me the artist that I am today. But through this, I just wanted to share this story because I, I had a friend that had dated that same man. He had did her the same way, but she never told me. And I said, maybe if she had told me, I probably could have avoided this man. So I want you all to tell people what happened to you. Don't be scared. It happened. It just happened. You know, you need to help people out here and everything like that. Have some self-esteem about yourself because I didn't love myself. I didn't think I was pretty or nothing like that. And that man was able to get to me because he got to my head. She, not, she don't think she pretty. She do stuff for people. She can buy a man. So let me get in her ear. So, but if you know you're beautiful, can't nobody tell you nothing. If they tell you, you so pretty, well, thank you, sweetie. You really want to mumble under your breath, I know. 
Okay? So, I say that to say that I'm an artist and I appreciate my gift from God. Yes, and he loves.